What's up everyone? I'm Nathan Graham Davis and I'm going to re-break in as a Hollywood screenwriter. Hey everyone, it's episode 22, which means that I have been at this project for like six months now. Uh, not much for updates since last week. I am between drafts of my script Aether, uh, but I should be getting notes back on that this weekend, and I am pumped for that because I think I'm only a few weeks out from having a really solid draft of this script. And that's exciting because that means that I can start querying on it. I'm going to submit it to Nickel and Austin and Paige, which is in my opinion, and I think really most people's opinions are the best three screenwriting competitions out there. And I'm gonna be doing uh, the kind of finale of this series, which will be a live streamed reading of the finished polished script right here on YouTube. So if you're not subscribed already, uh, make sure that you do that. Follow me on Twitter, I will be posting updates there. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to do that. So uh, a couple weeks ago, I had the pleasure of connecting with Manfred Lopez Grem, who is a screenwriter who just got his WGA card like last month. He is literally breaking in right now. Uh, we connected a few months ago on Reddit. We both post pretty frequently on the screenwriting subreddit over there. Uh, but what's cool is we actually connected after I started this series. So it's fun to have kind of, I don't know, it's kind of like coming full circle now. You know, I've been doing this series and and getting it out there and I met him after that and he's breaking in right now and so I just thought it made for a perfect opportunity for an interview to kind of capture what somebody's going through at that very moment and uh, it turns out he has an amazing story really really fascinating background and some awesome insights to go with it so enjoy how you doing man Fred oh great how are you Nate good Thanks for uh, carving some time out. I'm, I'm super excited to connect with you. This is awesome. Um, just because like, you know, we connected after I started doing this whole re-entry thing. And um, I don't know if it was because of a video that you'd seen or if it was a post that you'd seen on Reddit. But uh, either way, we connected after I got into all this. And then during that time, you actually got your foot so solidly in the door that you're now a WGA writer uh and that's yeah. that's just like amazing so it's super cool to to connect and uh I'm excited to dig in and kind of see how everything came together for you yeah actually I'm actually kind of like uh amazed you asked me because I don't consider myself to be part of like that group you know of like the established writers so well, it's it's cool it's like so so this whole series has been about like breaking back in right or um and uh, i just think it's really cool that you are literally at that point right now right so i it just made perfect sense to me since we had already connected and it happened to be happening right now to yeah. kind of see if we could capture a little bit of that and like what you're experiencing at the moment and like you know all the highs and lows of that and everything because uh, it's such a i mean that that's what so many people are working toward right now, right? Yeah, I, I think, um, I mean, by objective standards, I'm like on the, like what they may term like breaking through moment where it could happen and theoretically, yep. or actually statistically, you know, most likely won't happen, but there's like so many things happening that I'm just like trying to like catch up and uh, like, I'll try to go through some of them, but um, uh, there's like at least five, projects going on where potentially I, you know I could be involved in and uh so it's just like sorting through all of it and uh and then yeah. suddenly now that I'm like in the WGA they send you like the screeners and invitations yeah, uh, that's so cool at, yeah so uh, but now I have like no time whatsoever to watch any of it you know it's uh I'm trying to like uh keep up and um, by the, the way uh, sorry the, go ahead. yeah I was gonna say by the way um really awesome that you're involved as a producer now like with uh that feature film oh thanks yeah you know that's so funny because it's like that's something that i made that decision to get involved with that film over five years ago now and um at that point had said you know i think i may want to dip my toe into producing and then i kind of did my part uh early on and then it was just the brothers and the actors in a basement really they didn't need any boots on the ground producers for any of that you know it was really just them 
getting everything together. And then the current events just kept on changing everything so that the story had to be rewritten a couple of times. And it just, it took a long time. And then it just happened that as I was kind of getting back into the game and doing this series and, and writing my own stuff, all of a sudden Cactus Jack was about ready to come together and be ready to be released. And it, there was a, a need for me to kind of get involved again and, and stuff that I could do for it. So it was just really funny timing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's really fortuitous timing because I, I do want to continue to produce I'm still very much targeting like, you know, having uh, a project of mine made that I'm creatively involved in. Yeah. And so that's the next step, obviously, but it's great to be on something that I'm proud of and have that out there. It's, it's a really, really cool feeling. And it's just like, I suddenly feel like I'm a little more legitimate than I ever was. And that's, that's a nice feeling for sure. <laughs> it's funny you say that yeah. because, you know, it's, uh, I think, I don't know if it's just like general insecurity for all of us who like try to write, but it's like you always say okay as soon as i get that then i'll be legitimate and but then like you yeah. get it and you're like learn no that you're like so far down and then you know then you say I think okay that's the next true thing. for everybody you know i think everybody yeah. has imposter syndrome and, and i don't know if it's like something about like the type of personality that it takes to want to pursue something crazy like this anyway yeah. but i think that there's something intrinsic to us that like there's never, like, it's never enough, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. like you have this idea that, that like, this is like, if I do this, everything's going to be good and I'm going to be super excited and proud of it and happy. But I don't know. I, I know enough established writers and filmmakers now to know that they're all still kind of like going after the next thing. Like not to say that they're not happy about the things that they've accomplished, but like they still want to want to do more. And, and, and so it's a, uh, I don't know. I don't know if there is enough, well, the, the, you know, the way I kind of like picture it is, um, uh, and you know, one of the Christopher Nolan movies, the, the Batman, um, you know, he's like stuck in like this prison, which is like this huge. Yeah, hole. yep, yep, for and sure. And so everybody, like their goal in life is to like climb out, jump out or whatever without dying. And uh, so, so that's what I, I picture myself as a writer. It's like, oh yeah, like up there, that's, I've made it once I get to the top. And to me, that was like the, maybe the double GA. So I'm like, right. you know, doing all the efforts that was so suddenly you climb out and then you realize you're in the middle of the desert, you know, and you still have like thousands well, of miles. That was my, and, that was my experience after breaking in for the first time. And the, although I wasn't WGA, I mean, the, the you know first option that I had was very much like a Hollywood level contract for the most part. And I was taking meetings at Hollywood studios and production companies. And it was like, suddenly you get into this world and you're like, Oh, this is way different than I expected. And, I think everything yeah. is suddenly actually harder now. <laughs> and like, you know, yeah, so well, it's just, it's crazy. Well, you know what? One of the things that hits you right in the face um, is, you know, when you, I have like no doubt you're going to get into WGA. Um, so, like, when you do, it's very kind uh, of you. We'll see what happens. But I don't know. No, it's like, uh, I don't doubt it. Um, so, what, when you do us, um, you finally have access to the online platform that only like, right. you know, so so you like that's the first thing i do you know i log on and see you know all the goodies and stuff and it's just amazing what they've done with um you know after the strike uh not strike like the uh, what do you call boycott with the agents um they, they have like this self uh enclosed system where each writer is empowered to basically contact solicit meetings with anybody in the industry and it tells you like who has time and you just like click a button and you're allowed to request three general meetings. Uh, so like it does, you don't spam people. And, and it also tells you if they have assignments open or not. And I mean, I just have like all, all the information That's that super you, cool. you can tell. Yeah, but then it just like hits you and you realize, oh my God, I have like no credits. You know, and then you realize how small you are. And it's like, what's the point of like contacting these people when you have like, so WGA isn't that a funny thing real credits you know like to get into the wga which is elite like that like let's just be honest like that's an elite group of people if you're in the wga right so let's just start there but then you get it oh i thought and, and you click you. these things and you're like yeah. oh, i'm nobody all over yeah, again yeah you know? yeah yeah so, well, okay like, so i have a statistic um when i first you know uh, moved out of mexico i was trying to like figure out how to like deal with this whole thing you know like you know how to like break in um and so uh, at the time I, I, I looked up and the, the last Olympics had, uh, here I have like the actual number, it's um, 11,237 athletes who participated 
So that's each each uh, four years you have eleven thousand like two hundred something people. Okay, the WGA West only has eight thousand five hundred active members, and that's all. Right. You no, know, not every four years. Uh, yeah, the numbers WGA, are crazy. Yeah, East only has like four thousand five hundred. And but then you look at the number of people who have been paid in the last oh, year, and it's like yeah, it's even less. Lower, no, but, you know, yeah, and those numbers are, are not all screenwriters because that, that includes radio, includes uh, TV, includes uh, some uh, print magazines. You know, so yeah, uh, so it's like very, the actual screenwriting is like, oh my god, it's a very small number. Uh, you know, so like the number of writers who are being paid a livable wage for screenwriting yeah. every given any given year. And some of them are outside of the WGA, right? Like, you know, you've got people definitely cobbling together at least kind of a middle classish income from indie screenwriting. That does happen, but it's still very hard. And like the number of people doing that is definitely under 2,000 a year. And it's just yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So, I mean, that's like the number of people in the NFL, basically. Um, yeah. And so it's, yeah, it's, so it's, it's an elite field of people. And it's just funny that you get there and then suddenly you realize all over again, you're nobody. Like, yeah, it's like, it's like, okay, you made it into the Olympics, but now you're like the last person <laughs> who came in last, you know, it's like, oh my God. So, but uh, no, but it's like, I guess part of the fun and what like defines us as writers is like, we need that yeah. care, you know, of like, uh, like it's like, work, yeah. Work, work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I think, I, again, it's kind of like what I was saying is like, I think, you have to be kind of a dreamer type, right? Like, I mean, yeah, it just, it takes so much intent and focus to get that far. And um, so if you, if you don't have that, then, then you're probably never going to get there. And if you do have that, then that's probably just part of who you are and you probably never stop dreaming, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I don't know if that's a, exactly a recipe for happiness or not it just kind of is what it is oh. <laughs> like, no it's yeah like, it's a, you can ask a my, recipe my wife. for misery like, but yeah i should feel, tell you that i have like the ability of like to find like the bleakest acid no matter how good news i'm like no yeah yeah, yeah it's funny it's, it's, a, it's a tough business but uh anyway it's really cool that uh you've got into this elite level of wga so congratulations uh it's that's it's absolutely amazing um, you must be really proud of yourself. So it's very cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, th th there's also like a couple of other things happening. And uh, for example, um, the, that placement uh, that I put on Facebook the other day um, about- Was that the tracking board one or was that- uh, that, that, was a, that was the first one. Um, okay. Another one, the final draft big break. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I guess because of the pandemic, they, they had like the- largest submission pool ever of any kind. That's not surprising. Yeah. That it was, was close to 16,000. That's and, insane. Um, and, and so then I, I got top five for like whatever unknown reason and with my pilot, awesome. which just like blew me away. So that was just like really good timing with all the other stuff that was happening. Yeah. And uh, so, so the pilot now um, is like brand new news, I guess is um, the producer who optioned the other screenplay, um, the first one, also wants to make this one. And uh, so it's I'm so like, cool, man. <laughs> I'm in rewrite that's mode right so now. So exciting. So, yeah. That's so great. That, so, that's like a, the second thing out of five that's going on. And uh, that's a big thing, too. Like, like it's um, being able to build like a working relationship with somebody, right? Like, where it's not just one thing that you're doing together. Like that's yeah. how you build a career is by kind of developing these people that you're going to yeah. work with again and again over time. Like, yeah, um, it's, um, it, 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 that's, that's the other thing that I tell other people who kind of like ask me about this. It's um, being a writer. is not just the writing, you know, that's a small part of it. It's really hard. But the, the other one is just learning how to work with people. Yeah. And uh, there's like this big thing that like to me, you know, it's like a mental barrier where I had to like let go of the ego in the writing. And, and that was like beaten out of me like uh, many years ago. But like when I was younger, I, I, I had that, you know, like, no, it's like, I wrote it. It's like, no, it's, it's supposed to yeah. be, you know, it's not, you know, like, no, <laughs> no. You gotta and, be uh, comfortable with the, the collaborative nature of the medium for sure. Yeah. And uh, so like, for example, one of the notes that I got in, in, the, in the feature screenplay, the comedy is like, oh, they loved it. They, you know, want to make it, but, uh, could I just like change the antagonist? Uh, I, I had written it as a, a controlling white woman. 
and they wanted a easygoing black gay uh you know man and i was like okay <laughs> so i was like the opposite and the whole screenplay was built on the premise of entitlement and so that had to go out the window and had to like so that's <laughs> that's interesting that that was the note that you got um that and then it had nothing to do with the screenplay at all it had to do with uh they wanted to uh mold it after a real life person and they, okay they, so so it was like that kind of like a casting thing and so i, I did a, a producer's draft uh and now there's like a major a-list level celebrity involved and, no way really yeah so that's what's amazing so then I got all these notes and I'm like, okay, so, you know, this is like my attempt at uh, incorporating. I don't know if they'll go back to the other version. This was like a massive rewrite, right? But yeah, 25% of the screenplay changed. Yeah, that's a big one. Well, I knew that you, because you had said how you were like buckling down, like just like shutting out the world to yeah. focus on this thing. So um, I was really, you sent me this one pager of like your background and I was kind of blown away by it because I had not talk to you about any of this stuff before yeah yeah so i mean can we kind of like cover some of that uh sure, starting yeah. at the beginning like what got you into filmmaking and screenwriting at the beginning okay uh well i mean i have like my early you know a part where i went to film school and then like everybody else went to la and i was an intern and um i was at roger corman's company and um so i eventually uh, moved out of la because i realized um it doesn't matter if you're in LA or not. You, you, it, what matters is what you've actually done in half, you know. So it, it's actually really easy to meet people, you know. And uh, yeah, so it, it all becomes of like, well, what can you actually do, and what have you done? And uh, yeah. so then I decided to become a like an indie director producer, and that led me to Mexico. And uh, so I had like a contract with the government to uh, had like a film center and. Um, it was like a, this nonprofit thing. And uh, so out of that, um, we started doing workshops. And, and this was meant for actors, okay? So I got sucked into the, oh, and I should mention, by the way, when I was in LA, like everybody else, I was like doing my screenplays and all this. And at that point, I learned that basically I sucked as a writer. <laughs> so like, you know, I mean, it was okay, but you know, it was like not the-, the That's interesting. Like the, the, well, the things is like, you know, like I, I realized, yeah how much like the craft of it, you know, and that because I, I interned at some of the management companies and then I saw the, you know, the writing on, on the clients and I discovered I was really good at fixing and structuring. And uh, so they would give me always the, the stuff and I would, you know, work on it and then give it to their clients and they would implement it and then they would like sell it. And then, you know, uh, I was not paid. <laughs> I was an unpaid. <laughs> and uh, so, but that gave me hope. Uh, so I thought, okay, maybe I'm better as a director and, you know, and structuring and then actual writing of it. And, and a lot of it had to do with the language as well, because English is not my first language. And uh, so when I went to Mexico, it's we started- amazing, by the way. I would, oh, I would not have ever known that uh, by reading that script. You said that was the first English language script that you wrote? Well, the first one after that LA- yeah okay uh, early, yeah like I, I had I had that maybe done like four screenplays uh, in English uh like at that time but I those are like training you know things that doesn't count yeah like I've got I've got a uh, six <laughs> or seven of those training screenplays that nobody else is ever going to see yeah exactly so once I started doing the acting workshops um we pretty much quickly ran out of like what to film you know like the standard you know repertoire and um so I told the writers to like write their own little things. So then we started like kind of like developing together. And uh, so it started like kind of becoming like a little like a mini writer's room of like, okay, we'll give it a few hours and let's workshop on these scenes. So, so that That's was all cool. fine. Yeah, so that was all fine and, you know, very small scale until I did a workshop with a famous um, Mexican actress. Uh, her name is Ofelia Medina. And um, just to um, give you a little bit background, when I got the chance to like do a workshop with her, I was, I was, I, I thought, wow, that's an incredible honor. What I didn't know is that she was extremely difficult. Oh my God. And um, I can say this openly because everybody knows. I was going to say, do you need me to cut this? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, it, she's, um, I mean, she's extremely talented, but she's so yep. difficult. And in Mexico, there's, um, uh, there's like this uh, famous political uh, counter-revolutionary figure 
his name is uh, Subcomandante Marcos. And uh, he like, here in the US, maybe people have like, remember that he like would appear like hooded and, you know, give interviews. And uh, so anyway, he, he was like known as one of like Mexico's, oh my God, he's like a revolutionary. Well, Ophelia went and tried to like help out. And then he is like, oh my God, I cannot like escape her. Like he, she was such an overwhelming force. She eventually was declared a, a, a persona non grata, which is a, a very, uh, it's like a, it's like a, the, the government officially declared her not welcome, you know, in that state. And uh, wow. so anyway, she's, a, she's just like extremely strong-willed, uh, like extremely. So when I had the workshop, I suddenly found myself, I had to like uh, fight her off in a lot of the crazy stuff she wanted to do. And for example, one of the things she wanted to do is uh, make all the students sign a lifelong contract that they would forever and ever um, abide by the uh, dogma uh, 96 filmmaking style and never use oh. real lighting. And, and I'm like, yeah, I, I'm like, you cannot do that. These are students. I know she was adamant that they signed this thing. And so, you know, stuff like that, you know, so that was one, one of the, the most challenging workshops I ever had, uh, just like trying to like fend this like, <laughs> oh, you know, this massive energy. But uh, she did something which I called the Orson Welles, you know, ground shattering moment. Uh, and that's a reference when uh, to in film history or, you know, uh, Citizen Kane, where he wanted like the low shots, you know, of the camera. Sure. And then the DP was like, but we're already at ground level. And then he's like, break it. <laughs> Dig it. And then just like collectively the entire film was, you know, went we can go lower than ground, you know, you know, so, so it was one of those moments where we're doing the scenes and all that. And, uh, and then she's like, uh, no, no, let's go outside and film these in real conditions. And, and I was like, also, what? Like, you can do that in a workshop? So we went outside and then we started like becoming mobbed by people because she's famous. And we were like filming the scenes and it suddenly became like a real production. And so that added to the complexity of it. But thanks to that moment, um, like I decided, you know what, I'm gonna start doing this for every single workshop because the what we did, you know, was just, I mean, the energy level for everybody, the learning process, you know, it, suddenly it was like a real shoot with somebody who's actually, you know, for all her faults as a person, she knows her stuff really well. And uh, she taught us all like, you know, <laughs> so I'm forever gonna be grateful for her for that, not for the other stuff. But Interesting. I mean, oh yeah. but so anyway, after that, um, everybody heard about this and then they started signing up for the workshops. And um, so, I, I basically structured in such a way, okay, I will not do any of your writing. Like, no, I, I, on the sheet I sent you, I said, no, I will not fucking write anything. I'm sorry for the swear word. So everybody, That's yeah, yeah they understood. swearing on this thing. <laughs> so they <laughs> understood. And of course, nobody would complete their writing. It always would fall on me. And, uh, and then to complicate things, everybody got really into the getting of locations that became a like competition. So each generation of workshop had to do, do you know, I would do the last one. So we ended up with the most crazy locations uh, that, you know, somebody's uh, uncle had an entire hospital at their disposal. So they dedicated like the last three wings, which one of them was supposed to be possessed, you know, and then so we filmed there. We went to like an abandoned mine. Uh, we just like filmed in all kinds of crazy places because somebody knew somebody's, uh, somebody else. And, uh, and then the pressure of writing these things suddenly became like real for all of us. And uh, so sometimes uh, we were like stuck there. We only have like one hour to get it on paper. What we thought worked suddenly doesn't work anymore because now we have this. And so it became like this really intense, really high stakes thing to get, get the scene working with the actors. And, and you know, forget about integrity of the story. It's like you wanna, the thing to work with the actors with location. Otherwise the people who's giving that is gonna get, you know, they're gonna get mad. And, uh, and then the sheet I send you, like, I, 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 like one of the most extreme ones was uh, somebody actually managed to get like a helicopter <laughs> from the government <laughs> provided for us no with, shit. Uh, yeah, with uh, an accident scene with wrecked cars, ambulances, <laughs> and like this guy, because it's sort of a challenge, you know, like uh, this, this kid and he's like a natural born producer. 
And I said, uh, we were like joking at the beginning of the workshop. It's like, oh, you think you can outdo the other ones? Well, you know, they've gotten this and this, this. And he's like, I'm going to get helicopters and all this. Yeah, sure, sure. And then he, he announced that he, he did get those, in fact. And, and when I found out it was real and it was all, you know, arriving in two days, then we had to like scramble to like make a story <laughs> and all that. And uh, I'll send you a link to the thing that we filmed. But um, that ended up going to a lot of festivals and one you know, uh, recognition. And, uh, so it was really well done. That's um, so I, cool. Yeah. But it was That's like the awesome. pressure of coming up with something on the spot, but kind of like hone my skills on, you know, scene, you know, study. And, uh, and so you so, said you did like 200, like yeah, these, these videos, things. Yeah. Things. yeah, yeah. That's a uh, massive number. You yeah. Know? It's so, uh, like, obviously not all of them are good because you, you're depending <laughs> like the right. actors is some of them are like very well produced and some of them are just like, complete crap you but know, i mean just time. the sheer experience i mean that's yeah. that's so valuable like that must have played into you know everything that you're doing now on some level right like just all yeah. that writing experience and and also like you're talking about the kind of the the tension of having to do things quickly and just get it to work like that that feels like such a valuable um lessons that you would have learned from yeah. that right like how to how that's... to write something that's actually going to work on screen yeah. and actually yeah that's really and really that's cool. um and that's uh when i i said that uh, my ego got stamped kicked to the curb and stomped out of me because whatever I had written of like really cool dialogue goes out the window if the actor cannot perform the lines or then i realized way too many words you know it's just ugh, you know and so scratch 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 so it, it's like you, you you have to like destroy everything you thought you know Oh, this is like good, you know. And uh, once you see the reality of somebody actually, you know, performing it under, you know, the filming conditions. So, so yeah. And then, and, and then you, 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 and then also actors were really invested in this because it's their image, you know. So they had zero problems telling me, no, this sucks, you know, like they forgot about the politeness aspect of it, you know, <laughs> of like, uh, you know, yeah. So, so yeah, it's like, it is what it is. If it sucks, it sucks, you know? And if it's this good and then somebody says, will this work? And then I was like, trust me, it will. And, you know, so it's uh, it's also learning about how to work with people and getting them to trust you and you trusting them. You know, it's it's it, it's uh, it's an intense experience, you know? Like, yeah, so I mean like that, like that really sets the stage well for like everything that you've done since then. What, but what got you excited about like making movies in the first place? Like what led you down this path to start with? You mean like all the way? Yeah, sure. School? Like so, so like you went to film school, but like before that, like, like where did oh, all well, this? Or yeah, I think it was in 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 college. Uh, I thought I wanted to be a composer, okay, classical music, and so I, I did the whole almost the major, and you know, like maybe four credits shy, I realized. Wow, that I, so you got really close. <laughs> yeah so yeah but then I, I suddenly like realized that by the way I, I don't play any instrument at all whatsoever <laughs> so what? that was a small issue <laughs> so like you know I like composing music but uh cannot play to save my life so but um uh, so then I said okay so you well, understand music well enough to compose it yeah and you don't play anything no and uh wow. so okay so, so then I thought okay this is a problem <laughs> and then also I saw like no viable future whatsoever at all, especially if I don't. Play yeah, that's a hard future no. for sure. So. Yeah. And uh, and then I had all these other interests as well. And uh, and then I said, I, I should like switch into something more practical filmmaking. <laughs> so switch into like. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah, that so. that's that's the practical decision. Yeah. And, and it's because filmmaking uh, allows me to, you know, incorporate music. It, you're composing basically and sure. writing is part of it and, and so that's what attracts me it's like, like the composition aspect of all this putting all you know the pieces together and then um so yeah so i petitioned to you know do the film major and then they allowed me to do that so I were, there specific, were there specific movies back then that you um that kind of like inspired you or uh that you, yeah, that you well, remember uh, yeah. guiding you that way yeah, it's um, okay. It's not a specific movie, but um, I'll tell you an experience which was was the project. When I suddenly realized, oh, I have to like you know, be all about filmmaking. Um, you know, I, I tend to get obsessed over like topics. Then I said, okay, I gotta know about all the films. So one summer I didn't go back home and I stayed at the college like off campus. And I just decided, okay, I'm gonna just watch every single film on this one list of the top 100 movies. And um, I actually had two lists going on. 
So it was like the official Academy list. And then, then there was another one, uh, I think it was from Premiere Magazine. That list I loved. And that, that was like the most extreme films, not extreme, like uh, like uh, films that caused, uh, that caused uh, controversy somehow. And just sort of like, you know, so I saw a lot of like more obscure titles on that list. And, and then when it became this hunt, you know, of like finding them, there was like a video store that had a lot of the titles and the school's library. So that was like kind of like my, my, my uh, cliff notes, you know, introduction of like filmmaking. And then after that summer, I started taking the classes. And then I also did like a semester of uh, uh, technical filmmaking at um, the main media workshops. And uh, it's called now the main media college, I guess. But um, okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there I learned about actual practical, you know, film producing and um, all that good stuff. Awesome. All right. So then you finished film school and you, you did the LA thing and then went to Mexico and did the workshops and kind of just helped to revitalize yeah. the indie film scene there. Yeah. And then you decided to focus entirely on screenwriting. So why that? Uh, okay. So I don't know if you had a chance to read one of the links I sent. It was like um, the little testimonial. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I read the last paragraph was pretty interesting there, actually. I'm super curious. Yeah. So uh, everything was going well in Mexico with the workshops, the production. And uh, in, in Mexico, since there's like no real like sustainable industry, you end up doing all kinds of things. So uh, a lot of my income was from government jobs of like doing mm -hmm. um, documentaries. I filmed this thing with the Pope, for example. And um, I, uh, so commercials. Did you, you know, actually so, work with the Pope or? No, no, <laughs> you don't ever okay. work with the Pope. <laughs> you're like, okay. you're allowed so many feet within him <laughs> to film him. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, actually like- That's yeah, pretty so interesting I, though. I, yeah, so I did the official like documentary of the state to when he came to like visit Mexico and he <laughs> chose like the Pope chose three locations, three states, and Michoacan was one of them. And uh, like, oh my God, the security just dealing with all that was I, I've never seen I'm, so many. Yeah, I'm sure it's just like you know the president or maybe even more intense than that. So and no, no, because it was like levels of security, and I would have thought that the you know Mexican army was the top. No, it, it turns out the Vatican sec security detail was even above them, so they no couldn't way. get it. So it was like this crazy like layer of like security. You know, it's like uh and, and all that just so that you can say hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, um. Uh, I had like a you know nice little you know existence as an indie film filmmaker regional you know I would say, and then um, I started having issues with um, you know the cartel violence and uh, so filmmaking became like increasingly more difficult. So I, at least on two separate occasions, I was surrounded by machine guns and uh, so vehicles, why? and you don't never know who they are until because all the, like the police and you know, cartel members start dressing the same, all black, you know, <laughs> so. Right, so, but but why? Like, what led to you being surrounded by machine guns? Uh, well, one of the times, uh, uh, I, I, one, one of the times I was out on the street, uh, like half an hour beyond curfew, which I didn't know there was a curfew at 8 p.m. So I was out there like 8.30 with somebody, and then suddenly we were like surrounded by at least 10 vehicles. Machine guns come out, we were like thrown against the doors, and then my uh my truck was like full of filming gear you know and uh and they're all like black boxes which makes it look suspicious <laughs> and uh so they're like and then uh they realized that you know i was a filmmaker and uh and then they like took off the hoods and then it turned out to be the state police but okay. see there's like there's always like four forces you never know who they are it's either federal forces state forces outside cartels or local cartels and they all drive vehicles. All, so now it's gotten so bad that the cartels have official looking vehicles with insignias. You know, it's like so bold. So they are, they were really, police. yeah. Yeah. So it's just like, it's like, oh, okay. Who are you going to, who are you now? You know? <laughs> so, and the other time I was uh, at a location and we had a, a few cars outside, but you know, very like non we like filming inside. And suddenly we heard like banging on the door. And uh, so I opened the thing and surrounded just by machine guns because somebody had given a tip that they saw cars with, you know, uh, plates from other states, you know, outside, and that was suspicious enough for them to, like, break into the place, and, uh, and it turns out it's just us filming, and uh, so, you know, and so it just, like, it kind of became more and more difficult, and, and then eventually uh, I got into a situation where, um, you know, I don't want to get too much into it, but I, 
I basically had to like leave the country and uh, there were like some, I got robbed. Uh, I lost, um, you know, a lot of uh, gear and um, all my footage and backup drives, LTL tapes, so just everything gone. Uh. So <laughs> yeah, mm. so so the only thing that survives of everything that I film is what's on the internet, and uh, so so. But anyway, I I just like it just became like really difficult. So I left Mexico, and then I, I kind of find myself okay. I have like no gear, or nothing. Um, I have to like start over from scratch. And then here in the U.S., uh, it's like great if I did all that stuff in Mexico, but it doesn't really count, you know, like credits here you know so who you work with here in the u.s so so i decided i'm gonna like um you know try to make it here in the u.s went to new york and then uh, the pandemic hits <laughs> so uh so i said okay i think writing should be the one thing that i can concentrate on and then i've kind of like hunted down and uh wrote the the one screenplay and that that cost you know some attention and then wrote another one and then that got into the top five and uh amazing and then got into the WGA, and then I got a, a, the, the other five like projects going right now. And uh, so, yeah. So that's so, so since since you've gotten back, you've done or come into the US, you've done that feature and you've done the pilot. And then yeah. you've got, okay, cool. And then, so yeah, it's the actually actually circulating projects. Yeah. And then, of course, I've written other stuff that it hasn't gone out yet. So, that's so awesome. Yeah. It's so, so, so cool. So, what what is the pilot? Can you talk about that at all? or? Uh, well, it's it's called uh, Teleport, and uh, that's a provisional title for now, I guess. Um, okay. But that's that's what I called it, and um, and uh, basically, I I wrote it in kind of like the sci-fi action genre. And what what's kind of a weird about this one is that it's in the half-hour format for the pilot. And I was told over and over, you cannot do that. No, no, no. Like comedies are, you know, you have to do the hour. But the nature of it is such that it's like really fast paced and the cliffhanger is right at 30 minutes. So I said, no, I'm going to write it that way. So um, so I, I only submitted it to two places, uh, like the Austin Film Festival and then uh, Fine Ref Big Break. And, and then at Austin, it didn't make it past the first reader. <laughs> and the it's notes like, you know, how that works yeah like, but you know that i eventually got the notes and and they said no this this should be one hour format so so they and then i said oh shit you know they're they're right and then it makes it into the top five out of close to you know sixteen thousand uh final draft and like okay and then at austin that that same edition i got into the semifinals with the comedy one which then they ejected me <laughs> from the festival because of my option so well, I made it and then they said, oh yeah, you, you got to withdraw it. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Contests are weird. It's like, you know, there's, there's so many rules and there's so much sub subjectivity and like, you know, they're, but they're, but they can be really good launch pads. Is that how you got noticed with your feature or did you, or did the option come from elsewhere? Uh, the option came from uh, a tracking board launch pad competition. Okay. Uh, the, the, they have this system where they from all the entries they reduce to a hundred and then and it's like the top 75 top 50 top 25 and then the winners mm -hmm. so my comedy mad rush made it to the top 25 which i was very excited about yeah, so after that awesome. um uh, i had three people contact me like three different uh, producers and um who were interested in the project and so one of them was this french director who had like a an amazing list of credits of French comedies and wanted to break into the US. And he's like, love the zany nature of the screenplay, I guess. And then and then two awesome. producers from LA. And I decided to go with um, Jorge Garcia Castro. And he's an amazing, awesome producer. And uh, so, you know, I did a, a rewrite for him and then that got into the hands of that um, A-list a -list celebrity that I can't talk about. <laughs> I, I'm so like dying to like blab yeah. and talk about that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and um, and also you never know because, you know, it's like they may love it, and then I turn in like the latest draft, and then they suddenly hate it. You know, so it, you never know. And uh, so like I don't, I've like learned enough even from Mexico, like uh, trying to land projects, that sometimes it's even beyond your control. You know what happens, and uh, so I'll I'll be just grateful if one of these things lands and uh, to get me to the next step. Right now I'm like very grateful to have made it into the WGA, which. Uh, amazing has opened a lot of doors and yeah uh, that's amazing 
Yeah. Are you yeah. are you wrapped right now or are you doing are you flying solo right now? Um, well, I, I got approached by two people, uh, managers, and uh, I turned one down and the other one I'm still kind of thinking about. And uh, I, I got the advice to kind of hold off on all that until things settle. Yeah, I think it's great and, that you're taking your time. Um, yeah, and you know, also it's not something you want to rush. Yeah, and then also um, I, I'm kind of used to like generating my own, you know, opportunity so yeah uh the, the way i view it is um a manager what they do is they try to get you the meetings with producers studios you know streamers and all that the the people but if i'm already like kind of like forging my little relationship with them uh you know so that i mean until somebody really comes out and like you know we connect you know but um so so far like i'm trying to like just like do what i can with what i have and uh and, and the other thing is that I'm not sure if I'm ready for like a full blown agent yet, because um, I basically have my two samples and I have like a third thing that I'm almost done. And then I already got hired. I have like, uh, I have like two things due that I've been hired on. And so I've like finished all that. And so if I suddenly start getting like more, you know, I, I don't, you know, it's, it's going to like yeah. blow up in my face. So do you have like a lawyer that you're working with on commission at this point, or do you just kind of make it piecemeal for now or no i, have a, I do have a really good lawyer and yep. uh, his name is uh mikey glazer he's one of the founding producers for um fear factor nice. and uh cool. and then be, became a full-time lawyer uh, uh i learned so much just from him so he, he's really good at uh, he walked me through the whole negotiation uh thing you know yeah a great lawyer contract. can be insanely valuable so oh yeah i mean there were so many clauses and provisions i had like no idea about and i thought i knew yeah. contracts i guess you know from reading the internet <laughs> oh, like, i mean uh, it's amazing what you can find on the internet for sure but like man like yeah, a but good lawyer awesome. is worth their weight in gold absolutely yeah. like so um but uh yeah i mean i think that a lot of your instinct about reps sounds right just from a my experience and also b just from all of the stories i've heard from other writers you know the only th other thing i think about managers is like the other part of their job is to keep an eye on, you know, the market and like who's looking for what, right? So like yeah. they're regularly on top of that. And so if they suddenly hear that somebody's looking for a zany, fast-paced comedy, right? Like they yeah. have their eye on that. Whereas like your job is to be doing the writing for the most part. Yeah. So you might yeah. not be as aware of that. And so that's part of it. But agents also do some of that too. And, you know, it's yeah, but either, honestly- Okay, the, the way they have you is this, okay. My screenplay that got into the top 25 was a flawed version. Mm -hmm. So people reading it, it's not like an instant proof of, oh, the great next talent, you know? So it was full of potential. And, and the producer was able to see that. And I'm like, oh, well, if, you know, if we do this, 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 you know, maybe. So then that's uh, why he optioned it and then we worked on it. And if I didn't work out as a writer, it awesome. was somebody else, you know, um, an, an agent, what they look at is, are you ready right now? You know, are you like fully professional? And uh, they, they don't have that much time to like develop you, you know? So, so that's like the big difference. And, and then uh, the, the manager, I guess that's what they do. Uh, so it's more long-term project, but the producer is not about me as a writer. It's about the screenplay. So if they see it's kind of close, they'll give you as a writer a shot, obviously, you know, but if not, right. then that they want is a screenplay. So uh, luckily, I guess, you know, I, did a okay enough of a job with the rewrites that um they're still asking yeah me i mean that so. that's amazing it says everything especially and like it's so cool that the same guy wants the pilot so yeah like, and uh yeah and, and i'm actually very excited about that one because um if this actually lands then i mean I, i'd be set you know but uh because it's like high budget but uh right now it's like the initial like wave of excitement and now I have to like uh, rewrite it and I pitched him a take on how to rewrite it and then he liked it and he's excited about that so I have a few weeks to get it done because there's like a element of um, time involved where they, they have like this slot where they they could put it into so oh so you so you really have to like crank yeah. on that too <laughs> yeah so it just doesn't end because like you just went through that period where you were like nose to the grindstone like not looking up at anything yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. now you're going right back to it. Yeah, I even had to ask my other producer for permission if I could delay my, you know, date uh, with him, explain the situation over here, why it was so important. 
and it was yeah. like a, a huge uh, opportunity and then and because if i do well there it's going to help him as well so then yeah. i was like oh fine and uh yeah but it gets complicated <laughs> so for sure and so you said that you've got several other things like irons in the fire now as well huh yeah um the producer uh, the, the first one, uh, Jorge Garcia Castro, I'm going to start using names. Uh, so Jorge Garcia Castro uh, just got a series order from Disney, which is a huge deal because um, he used to do uh, feature films. He comes from the visual effects world and like his films include um, Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, mm -hmm. Tron, um, you know, uh, just huge movies. And so then he started producing and he has about maybe seven or eight feature films. And all of them have in common that he works with like A-list level talent, uh, Michael Caine, you know, that kind of uh, awesome. level yeah. of actors. And, uh, but he hadn't done anything in TV series. And, uh, and so when he looked at my pilot, I was oh, this is awesome. But it turns out that now he's like fully switched into that side as well. And so he got his first, uh, he got first a pilot order, which is a big deal in the industry. And, and now like a five days ago, it, you know, wasn't the traits. He got the um, complete series order for the first season. And so he said, he put me on the short list for the writers from that one, which I don't know if it's um, how serious that is or not, but- uh, That's, I mean, that's like super he, cool. Yeah, yeah, but he said it as an afterthought. Yeah, he said it as an afterthought. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, I put this on. <laughs> so I don't know. And uh, so that's it's, pretty cool. It's funny, like, you know, the things like that are afterthoughts to some people yeah. when like, that's like, you know, the most amazing thing to you, right? Yeah, it like, is because I, so. potentially I would have to move to LA and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then the director of that series uh, uh, of the pilot, uh, we're in talks that uh, maybe for me to write a feature for him. And uh, we we're like in early stages of that as well. So I, I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but um, it's it's at least cool that, um, you know, these people are reading my stuff and responding to some of it, I guess. Of course, it's amazing. I mean, like, I mean, you're very much like in now, right? Like you're WGA, you're getting, you're getting paid to, to write and you've got like all these things like lining up in the hopper. It's, it's super, super exciting. Yeah, and then the 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 New York project, that's the one that got me to the WGA. Yeah. Uh, that one I, I cannot contractually talk about at all, uh, like not name names, like the, the producer just wanted it that way. But one thing I can say is that I completed uh, three months of research, uh, you know, where they brought me out and, um, and it has to do with the world of, of firefighters. Okay, and, cool. Uh, so I completed a training at one of the, like I, they had me take like forensic classes, you know, talk to experts. No way, that's so fun. Yeah, and then uh, like the, the, the craziest one was um, I, I did a weekend at, um, at a fire training academy in New York, which is the most elite one in the country. Uh, and the reason is because it's the, the oldest one that uh, they got grandfathered in before all the federal regulations. So they're the only ones allowed to burn above 5,000 degrees when they do their training. No way. So, so they have a whole city. Did campus. they have you go through any of their like insane yeah, like, fitness like tests and building. stuff or like? Yeah, they, they burn complete buildings, they have cars, boats. It's just like a, it's a movie set, you know, and uh, or movie that lot. That must have been insane. And uh, so, so I have cool. pictures and everything. I'm going to like post some of them uh, soon. And uh, yeah, I, I would be super curious to see those. That's really cool. Yeah, I had to do first the training and then see how I worked out. And uh, after the training, they said, oh yeah, they liked how we worked, how I interacted with people. They really liked my interviews of everybody. And uh, because I, we interviewed some really like high level, you know, experts and, uh, you know, and you have to be diplomatic. And since I had the experience in Mexico of dealing with government people, so that came in handy. Yeah, I mean, I, th I can't say enough about how, how important that type of experience is, right? And like a lot of people, uh, especially in creative fields, like don't have it, um, for whatever reason like they just haven't been exposed to those types of situations so like your government experience like that's that's also amazing right it's not necessarily creative filmmaking experience but it probably <laughs> has so much impact on you being able to be successful because being able to interact with it and just network and, and work with people is is so critical i mean like it's like frankly like one reason why even though i had this big gap in my screenwriting time um this entire time i've had this like banking job where 
my entire job is people, you know, and I'm actually really grateful for that. And I think it's going to serve me very, very well as I'm getting back into this, just because I'm much more comfortable working with people, uh, much more comfortable in, you know, leadership situations or just like collaborative situations. And uh, certainly like diplomacy, when you need to work through really hard disagreements and figure out a solution, like all that stuff matters oh, so much. Yes. And a lot of people yes. don't, haven't built up those, those skills, you know? Yeah. Uh, working with government, I guess the biggest skill I learned is patience. <laughs> Just right. Yeah. Patience Mexican bureaucracy critical. and corruption. Oh my God. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know for anybody watching this one, like if you can find some sort of side gig or even like getting involved in like some sort of community thing where you get the opportunity to kind of work with a lot of people through challenging things. I, I think that's so important and like it, uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it can it's only just, help you. Well, filmmaking is, uh, it's not a cliche. It's, it's true. It's like a, a team effort. Yeah. And, and so the most important skill is to learn to work with people. And if 100%. you cannot do that, it's, you know, yeah, yeah there's like no future. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, it, it, it's just like all these things that you're talking about. It's it's so cool because it's like you can see how those all come together, and and uh, you know they create a path, and it's not a standard one at all, right? Like your your path in is not like necessarily the typical standard way that people have have carved out a screenwriting career. But I don't think there really is one. I think that's kind of a myth, um, and you can kind of just see how all that's come together to really serve you well. So. I have to assume based on all the stuff that you've done so far that you are planning on picking directing and producing back up at some point, right? Uh, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, it, it's the, the way of it is if, if I, my role has been decided upon me to be the writer, then that's fine. You know, like I yeah. really enjoy it. Um, if I can direct again, that will be amazing. Um, all, all I know is that the stakes have gone up significantly. And um, sure. Uh, so honestly, I've, directed a lot in Mexico, but, you know, it doesn't even compare slightly to the level of directing that you have to do, like on a real show or, you know, a TV series or a movie. And um, so if they say, oh, yeah, go ahead, direct this, you know, $100 million thing, you know, I would freak the hell out, you know, because it's like, <laughs> it's like, a lot no, of no, responsibility. I, you know, yeah, I like work with got... indie people, you know, favors and, you know, it's like, uh, because uh, yeah. high end uh, directing is, is so much about people management and data. Right. I mean, like you're in charge of 500 management. people, right? Like, yeah, so. because you don't, it's like you hire experts to do each single thing, you know, yes. and, and you're like the architect, it's like designing a building, you know, uh, you're not going to be there doing any of the work yourself, you know, so it's, um, and, and the kind of filmmaking I've been involved with is, is where I end up like doing a lot of stuff myself. So, yeah, so, so it's different kinds but of you skills. Need, yeah. I think you need to have that though. Like, oh right? yeah, yeah, you need yeah, to yeah. understand how those things function. So you can at least speak in those terms to the people that you're working with. And, and so, yeah, well, well one of the really things valuable. that it helps with is, um, if like I, I've been in some bigger shoots, you know, with a lot of crew and all this, and then suddenly something goes wrong. And, and then you get like paralyzed because you have all this money and people and time is running out. And, and, and then if you've like done this thing before and you remember that in this other production, you suddenly like zero in on what the problem could be. And you can like find right where the thing is, you know, and what's like causing problems and kind of solve it. So, so it, it's just like building up a memory, you know, of, you know things and solutions that's you know a repertoire of you know things that have gone wrong and you learn from it and uh uh yeah so and then you end up like learning like the weirdest things that happen <laughs> it's like it's, yeah i think that's so cool i mean it's certainly something that i don't have like you know part of me is like yeah it'd be cool to direct someday but i don't even like like that would be i'd have to spend years just focusing on uh, entirely yeah, different craft yeah. right like yeah it's um, um i Honestly, like, uh, that's like the one, like my pet peeve, you know, of like, well, I roll my eyes is when, uh, and there's like two, they're the same. It's like with writers who think that just because they've written one thing, they deserve to be at the top. Right. And also yep. directors, you know, which I, like to me, uh, calling myself a director, I did not do that for the longest time because uh, I had worked with directors. And um, so I always call myself like an indie filmmaker. Because to me, uh, you can only call yourself a director if you can command the respect of actors. 
and uh, where the crew and the actors actually listen to you. And um, you, the only way to like get to that level is by having that body of experience of working with people. And uh, so I was maybe comfortable with it, like the third, fourth year of where at that, by that point, I'd like work with hundreds of people. And it was clear that, uh, that I could maybe do something right with, you know, a actors. And um, so, but then you get like, uh, you know, people who have like never done anything. They will suddenly want to do a feature film. They've never even done like a short film. And, yeah. and they're announced, oh, I'm a director, da, 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 you know, and it's like, okay, great, you know, do it, you know, uh, it's like the proof is in the pudding. And, uh, uh, and I would always suggest do a short film first, even a, yeah. as a writer. Yeah, I mean, it makes perfect sense. Uh, yeah, because- I'm actually, I'm super inspired by um, by having come off of Cactus Jack, right? Like, it's like, you know, the Thornton brothers, uh, they're incredible, incredible writers, but this was their directorial debut. But they had done, I know they've done at least one short before. They did two shorts before that. Um, and, uh, you know, and this was a micro budget film with just a couple of actors in a basement. And, and it was like, perfect. Right. And it just, it's like, okay, that's, I feel like that's something that I'm kind of inspired to try at some point, you know, writing something that can be shot for under $50,000, uh, and made well for that amount. And, you know, it's, uh, and just trying that out to kind of cut your teeth and learn some things and experiment and, and, and whatever it's that, I think that's really, really cool. And it's amazing that technology has kind of opened up the ability for people to do that now in a way that was never possible before, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, um, it's a really exciting time, man. I'm, I'm so excited for you. Congratulations on everything that you got going on. Um, it, it's you. just, it's so cool. I'm so happy for you. Um, did you have anything else that you wanted to touch base on or, um, you know, shout out or, yeah uh, yeah one last thing um uh i guess we talked about everything except this which i consider really important which is reddit and uh screenwriting um yeah subreddit. uh honestly a large of the credit goes to that community of you know it's what a I've great community i was i was do. so surprised when i started yeah like, um, because around. because um um, and there's like a several online communities, right? Um, and I think Reddit by far is the, the best one and, and the caliber of people that participate. So you have WGA writers, both mm -hmm. like announced and unannounced, you know, and, um, and you have like industry insiders and then you have like complete like novices like myself, you know, and uh, well, now- you know, I don't, I, guess, I don't think that's fair to call yourself- No, like, no but, but, but two years so. ago, like two years ago, like sure, I had like okay. no idea. Yeah. I think it's the best current free and- uh, or not even not even free, but but public online community for screenwriting. Uh, it's just it's yeah. absolutely excellent. So um, I mean, there's a bunch of crap there that you have to wade through, but you can learn to do that pretty quickly and uh, get a feel for, you know, who well, are yeah, the but I mean, that's just paying with, attention to. Yeah, with any place, I mean. Um, yep. No, it's um, but it, there's even value in that because uh, I mean, it, it it takes bravery to put yourself out there, and yep, you definitely. did it with your first draft, you know, and you. Did a whole episode yeah, that was scary, but it's, you know what, I have to, and I, I, I'm glad you said that because I would love to encourage like other people, like, you know, I'm not saying like you need to do what I did with like putting your first draft out there and doing notes publicly, but I like every time that I've done something in this series that has scared me and that's been several times, like yeah. the first episode I was terrified to put out for what it's worth. And that one just seems so innocuous compared to everything else. Yeah. And then like, I remember the fourth episode where I had Malcolm Spellman had asked me to pitch some ideas to him and yeah. I didn't expect that. And then I did. And then he shut me down. I was like really concerned about putting that out there. It just felt so embarrassing. And then I got all this great feedback. Like I appreciate the transparency and stuff. So I was like, oh, okay, that wasn't so bad. And I just kind of had kept like, you know, pushing it further. Yeah. And it it's like really, um, I don't know. It's like, it's improved my confidence a lot right like and it's also because it's improved my confidence in as far as like taking risks like i'm way more willing to take certain risks now because i've done those things and then survived it and it was fine right well did and you ever so, any regrets whatsoever with putting out your first draft no not so far okay <laughs> like good you know it's early like there's all sorts of things that could still go wrong but i, I mean i think it's cool like i think it's cool that uh people can see that, right? Like, it's like, it's a really rough draft. I mean, it's, it's a rough draft by somebody who's experienced, but like, it's still a really rough draft. And like, and, and also like all the notes along with it, I think it's a cool learning experience. And I, I am about to finish this one. I should have it finished tomorrow. 
and it's a whole lot better based yeah. on those notes. Uh, oh, yeah, obviously good. So, yeah. So I'm going to put that out there too, and just kind of let people follow it along, and then I'll do that live script reading, and I, I hope people get something out of it. It's been it's been really well, the, cool. Uh, I've learned a ton. Yeah, your that episode uh, that you did um, was very interesting. Like I, I was like glued to it because uh, there's so much like subtext going on with everybody, what you're feeling. Oh yeah, man. you I can like watch that. my and, face as I'm like feeling the emotions. Like yeah, like, no, you can like, like tell, and then <laughs> also like them figuring out how to phrase things and yeah. uh i wouldn't like well, show that like a master's class of acting it's like you know <laughs> it's like it's oh, a, wow. it, it was even funnier because like we all know each other fairly well um yeah. but like this idea of it being public right so it's like there there are just layers right so yeah. it's it's pretty funny um but it was it was so cool to do and i'm so glad i did because it's just again like it increases my confidence in taking more risks and i think you have got to be willing to put yourself out there and take risks if you want to uh, have any sort of success in an industry like this, because it requires that. And there is no one path in. You have to try different things and, and be willing to do the shit that scares you. And so that has helped me with that big time. And I, I encourage people so much to do the things that are, are that seem scary to them, you know? Yeah. And one last thing I want to mention, it was a really great uh, piece of advice you gave, uh, uh, which was uh, like to do a task which is kind of tough and then see it through the end and you suggested like covering other people's screenplays you know and mm. you know, set yourself a goal um, I, I kind of did something similar in, in the sense that I started doing recaps for um, script notes podcasts so I oh, did right I forgot about those yeah, yeah. so I, I did so talk about those yeah that's cool yeah, I, I did. Uh, it all started when I did one, you know, because I thought it was really great. And then people said, oh, you know, we should like do these more. And then I said, yeah, why not? So I, I started doing them. And then John August actually started mentioning them on the show. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, and he called it like some people, you know, so I actually wanted to get that on a t-shirt, some people, you know, but uh, all right. All right. So, so he actually gave the credit, uh, you know, at the end uh, for like several, you know, weeks, you know, and then some people on Reddit are doing like recaps. Blah, blah. So then I felt, you know, oh man, I have to now do these. And so I did half a year. Going. Yeah. So I did half a year of these things and that was like the best um, crash course in the industry uh, because it's one thing hearing the podcast, but it, once you have to like, think about it and condense it and put a thing, you know, label it and, uh, you like really absorb the material. And then I, you know, it's like, uh, it's like kind of doing like a paper on it, you know? And, uh, so I, I started doing that and then eventually I ran into things in real life with contracts and I remembered, Oh, wait a minute, there was an episode where they talked about that. And so I was, you know, able to find it quickly with my notes and, uh, and the things, um, the recaps and, uh, so that's awesome. that was like yeah so when i talked about like you know the metaphor of the olympics uh that was kind of like my training period where i said okay i have to like do something constant and for some people it's like writing so many pages per day you know uh, that that part i really could do because of all the stuff in mexico but it was like this crash course in just learning about the industry and how things are done here in the us um and the only way is like through you know uh the, what you're doing with this program which i think yeah. is awesome because it, it, it just like forces you and there's like a few days where you're like, no, not today. I don't want to. And, oh, I have to. Okay. Yeah. I mean, to, yeah. to keep up. So, I mean, I just took a two week break, but like to keep up doing this for five months straight was very challenging while also writing a script, while also holding down the day job and trying not to be a shitty dad, you know, and like, <laughs> um, it, it was really, really hard and it's still hard. Like, um, cause I haven't stopped writing and now I'm going to do at least a few more episodes of this. So it's, it's very challenging, but like, the process, it's like you were just talking about the process of making these episodes with really smart writers and then having to go through them three or four times in order to edit them. And also thinking through like both like how, what I'm going to talk to them about and then also recapping it all. Like, I mean, just, I've learned so, so, so much from it. So like for me alone, this has been really valuable. So even if nobody else ever got anything out of it, it was worth doing. Uh, and mm. it seems like some people are at least gaining something from it. So it's just, it's super cool, man. And it, like, it sounds like very similar to what you were just talking about with those script notes episodes. So Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, like to me, it's been an honor for you to like invite me on, on your program because oh, it's like I said, you know, like I completely do not feel like I belong, you know, I just starting out and, uh, uh, but I guess some of the experiences of, you know, in Mexico here and all this is like similar enough to what you're doing right now so 
it, I mean, that's Next what I mean. It's like, I relate like a lot and like, and you're further ahead than I am. And like, but I, but it, I relate so much to like this, this period that you're in. And so I think it's so exciting and uh, I'm pumped for you. And it just felt like a perfect episode of this series. So thank you very much for taking the time to do it. I really, really appreciate oh, it. No, thank you. So, thank you. And definitely keep me updated on what's going on. So uh, I'm pumped for you. Oh, I will. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. You too. Huge thanks to Manfred for that. I hope you all found it as inspiring as I did. Uh, you should definitely be following him on Twitter and on Reddit. He has been posting a ton of good information over on Reddit lately. So I will, uh, I'll will i drop a link or two to some of his posts in the show notes below so that you can follow him that way. But definitely check him out. Uh, next week, we've got Jeff Willis, Jay Thornton coming back along with our friend Mike Morin. We're going to talk about some kind of unconventional ways that people have broken in and are breaking in as well as things that you should look out for along the way. So uh, it's going to be super cool. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss it. And with that, smash cut to black. <laughs>